So I saw this Reddit post that says there is approximately 25 times less Flutter jobs than React Native ones in my area. And this is not the only post that I found on the Reddit page of Flutter Dev that talks about whether they can find a Flutter developer job than a React Native job. And the reason why, and actually it is a truth, is that like all blogs and articles that talks about Flutter is that Flutter is relatively a new framework. If you give a search for a Flutter job, for example, in my area, Singapore, I will get probably around 50 plus Flutter job results. However, if I were to search for React Native in Singapore, I will get almost 400 job results. That's an 800% of an increase in job results. So the question is, should you stop learning Flutter and go to the React Native side? Before I answer that question, I would like to explain why there is more React Native jobs than Flutter jobs. For some of you, it might be obvious. For some, it might not. So this is going to be a little bit of a history lesson. React Native was inspired by the React Framework. So React Framework is a web framework and React Native is a mobile framework. And both of these frameworks are created by Facebook. So which came first, React or React Native, egg or chicken? If you know the answer, React was born first before React Native. React was shown in a JavaScript conference in 2013. Then after that, it proceeded to advocate globally mainly YouTube, and also advocate developers. Then two years later, when developers are getting used to the React web framework, React Native was born. Therefore, if you were a React web developer then, now you are able to create a mobile app without learning any new languages, new framework, or even the native code. And since many companies have been creating their websites using React Framework for the past five to seven years, they also have in mind React Native as their go-to platform in order for them to create a mobile app. Therefore, I want to emphasize that it took five years for React Native to be the staple brand name for cross-platform apps. And that's the end of the history of React. Now, I'm going to talk about the history of Flutter. Flutter was originally named Sky and it was shown in a Dart conference in 2015. It was an eye opener of what the it was an eye opener of what the framework could potentially do. Then in 2018, three years later, it was shown in the Google I.O. and that's when Flutter really grew. And developers around the world was actually getting to know more about Flutter mostly through YouTube. Therefore, Flutter has really grown in popularity for two years, which is not as long as React Native, which is five years. These two years of exposure of the Flutter framework is one of the reasons why you can't really find a Flutter job near you. So this actually contributed to this concept called the technology adoption lifecycle concept that is by this book called Crossing the Chasm. This technology adoption lifecycle concept is a bell curve that is separated into six stages. So the first one is innovators, then early adopters, early majority, late majority, and lastly, the laggards. <laughs> if you were to ask me where to place Flutter right now in this adoption cycle, I will place it in the early majority. So before I explain why I chose the early majority, I'm going to explain every stage of this adoption cycle. So the first one is innovators. So innovators, from what I've remembered, is that these are the hipsters. These are the people who will look out for all of these new frameworks and try out to see what potential they have. These people are very, very rare. Now comes the next stage, which is the early adopters, which I think I am. I'm very proud of it because I knew Flutter when it was 2018, the beta phase. Humble brag. Actually, moving on to the next stage from the early adopters to the early majority is actually very, very hard. And the book says it all. It is crossing the chasm. However, good news, the Flutter team did a really, really good job in crossing the chasm from making it an early adopter technology to an early majority technology, which is you guys. 
early majorities are people who you know wants to like go into mobile development and they don't know what to do so they go google and search and they see oh flutter and then they went to see it and then they try it out on their machines and they liked it and they like the dart language they like the flutter framework and that's when you guys are in the early majority not only developers are part of the early majorities young companies and startups are too this is because it is a cheaper option for you to hire one person to build for iOS and Android. Why I say Flutter is currently in the early majority stage is because number one, GitHub stars. So GitHub star is not a very accurate way for you to measure, but it's still an indicator. So if you don't know, Flutter has more GitHub stars than React Native GitHub stars, which has been a long time to be the go-to cross-platform framework. And to top it off, Flutter is trendier than React Native according to Google Trends. Now with these new companies using Flutter, why isn't there a lot of Flutter jobs? So I would like to address the late majority. So late majority consists of, I would say, senior developers or people in the tech field for a very, very long time. And these companies are usually medium-sized or big companies that have code bases in their native code for iOS and Android or even using cross-platform frameworks such as React Native. So if they want to go to the Flutter framework or to migrate to the Flutter framework, they will take a lot or risk a lot of time and effort for them to migrate their code base or huge code base into the Flutter framework. And these people who are the senior developers are the people who make the tech decisions of what framework they should use. So they also create the demand of what kind of software engineers they are looking for. So for example, if a company have been using React Native framework for the longest time, then they wouldn't want to find a Flutter developer. They would find a React Native developer, which is a fair reason. So the question that I've asked earlier in this video, should you stop learning Flutter and go to the React Native side? Well, why not both? However, if you can't find a Flutter mobile developer job that's suitable and near you, then what you can do is you can do freelance or if you really, really like mobile development, then why not pick up React Native to get a job? And if you need to survive, the last thing that you have to think about is whether you should stop learning Flutter. Get your priorities right. Get a developer job. Get a job. Get any job. And learn Flutter on the side. Create projects. Learn Flutter create videos about Flutter. Mm? Then if you find a Flutter developer job in the future, then your hard work, your endless nights of grind debugging your Flutter app would pay off because now you have the experience of creating a Flutter app and experience in Flutter mobile development. I can't guarantee that you can find a Flutter job in the future, but one thing for sure is that hard work pays off. So don't worry whether you can find a Flutter job worry about how well you are as a software developer. So that's it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more of this video, subscribe down below and comment down whether you want to know how to make money using the Flutter framework. That's about it. Stay safe and all the best. Bye. Bye. I have a lot of eye opening. <laughs> Clicking on mobile developer.